What's the purpose of art? I'd argue that it's to feel something. When you see yourself, your real emotions or life experiences reflected in the characters on screen when you're drawn to them, that's the mark of real artistry, in my opinion. And although I've seen a lot of anime, it's very rare that I find one that affects my life in a real way, one that picks me up and inspires me, or gives me a different perspective on real life. But the anime that does that the most, and the best, is Naruto. An epic spanning over a thousand episodes where we watch a snotty little kid grow to be champion of the world. It's got hype moments, sad moments, funny moments, and everything in between. It's got an incredible magic system and a world that feels deep and alive. But I'd argue that the best part about Naruto is its characters. Every major character is three-dimensional and layered and something I can relate to or understand. Naruto's drive to be the best, Shikamaru learning to be a leader, Sasuke pursuing his goals, Kakashi's loneliness, Tsunade finding hope, Lee's journey to self-worth. People love Naruto because of how human it is. That's why I love Naruto too. I see myself in so many of these characters, relate to the journeys, root for them. But not every character is relatable or human. We have Orochimaru, who does human experiments to find immortality. We have Hidan, who is a murderous religious zealot. And for most of the series, Itachi Uchiha falls into this category as well. He's a remorseless serial killer who destroyed his own clan just to test his own abilities. He murdered his mother and father and peers in cold blood and tortured his little brother with genjutsu. Sasuke was seven years old when Itachi unleashed Sukiyomi on him for 48 hours, forcing him to see the slaughter of his own family over and over. Itachi was a monster. But although he wasn't a relatable character, he was still freaking sick. He was captivating in just how evil he was, and had some of the coolest jutsu in the series. Sukiyomi, a genjutsu that incapacitates you in less than a second and is just so visually stunning. A Madarasu, a fire that can burn through anything, and somehow looks even cooler. Whenever Itachi was on screen, he stole the show. A remorseless, cold, ruthless psychopath who existed only to wreak havoc. And you can't talk about Itachi's story without mentioning Sasuke. They were brothers, and Itachi was Sasuke's target from the moment we were introduced to him. One of the reasons Sasuke is so interesting as a character is because he's a protagonist and a little kid, but his main goal in life is to murder someone. And not just anyone, but his older brother. The person he idolized as a kid, who he was told to look up to and who he did look up to. The person he loved most became the person who destroyed his life and his family, who tortured him and caused immense amounts of suffering. Itachi vs Sasuke has built up unlike any other in maybe all of anime. Killing Itachi is Sasuke's goal from the moment he's introduced, it's what motivates him to train so hard, and it's what makes him leave the village at the end of part 1, making Itachi indirectly responsible for the entire Sasuke retrieval arc. Sasuke had just lost to Itachi and it wasn't even close, so he seeks out a literal terrorist so that he could improve. And then, in Shippuden, Sasuke slowly beats Itachi's current and former teammates. Orochimaru, then Deidara. It's so hard fought both times, especially the fight against Deidara, where he wins by the slimmest of margins. And we finally get to this moment. Sasuke finally has a chance to get revenge, and holy shit is this fight a masterpiece. When I watched Naruto for the first time, ya boy was depressed. How depressed? Well, I watched the entirety of Naruto and Shippuden in 11 weeks. That's about 32 episodes a week, nearly 5 every day for like 75 straight days. That's on top of school. <laughs> I was in college and kind of having an existential crisis. What should I major in? What career should I go into? What internship should I apply for? Should I rush a fraternity? What's the point of it all? Naruto was an escape from the decisions and consequences of my own life. It was a place I could turn my brain off and just watch this funny little kid in an orange jumpsuit beat up some bad guys and maybe learn a thing or two along the way. I grew to love the characters, and the magic system, and the narrative. I cheered for Rock Lee to beat Gara in the shooting exams, and cheered even harder when Gara saved him against Kirimimaro. I wanted more than anything for Naruto to destroy Neji for what he did to Hinata, but then I turned around and rooted for Neji against that spider arrow guy. This series was incredible in the way it played with your expectations and who you were rooting for at any given moment. And so I should have known that there was more to Itachi 
than met the eye. Itachi vs Sasuke is incredible. It opens with Itachi saying, just how much can you see with those eyes, and ends with Itachi collapsing. In between, we see the craziest Genjutsu battle ever, the return of Orochimaru, we see Amaterasu and Kirin and the Susano. It was an escalation of weapons and tactics as both fighters reached deep into their bags of tricks to throw everything they had at the other. And then, at the end, it looks hopeless. Sasuke has exhausted his options, and Itachi has the Susano. Itachi slowly walks towards his little brother and collapses, dead. Sasuke stood victorious. He had fulfilled his life purpose, killing his brother and avenging his clan. I remember watching and feeling so satisfied with what just happened. I would have loved for Sasuke to deliver the final blow himself, but it was almost poetic that Itachi had been beating Sasuke but lost anyway, almost like it was some sort of divine punishment for his sins. But this wasn't the end of Sasuke and Itachi's story. At the start of the fight, when Itachi says Sasuke can't see anything, he might as well be talking to the audience. Because like Sasuke, we know nothing about Itachi. Nothing. Until Tobi reveals it to us. Itachi wasn't a traitor. He was a double agent for the Leaf. He wasn't a genocidal maniac. He was trying to minimize casualties. And most shocking of all, he didn't hate Sasuke. He loved him. He loved his little brother more than anything. In one episode, everything is flipped on its head. Everything we thought we knew about Itachi and the Uchiha was inverted. And hearing Itachi's story, I was moved to tears. I'm not someone who cries a lot in movies or TV or anything. That's not a flex, I have nothing against people who do cry, but it's only happened to me three times that I can remember. But when I saw Itachi's dying face, a genuine smile of happiness, and booping his brother's head one last time, let's just say my eyes had suddenly learned the water style. In my own life, I've been stressing about purpose and just what to do with my life. I was stressed about grades and extracurriculars and girls. I'd been worrying about the future, but I had realized that I'd been focusing on the wrong things. I have one little brother. We're about the same age gap as Sasuke and Itachi, and we've always been relatively close. And I think that's why Itachi's story struck a chord with me and moved me so much. Itachi was just a kid filled with love. He was just going through the motions of his life just like I was, being part of the Akatsuki because what else was he going to do? Just like I was going through the motions of college because what else was I going to do? His guilt was weighing on him and he was sick, but he still found meaning in helping his brother. I don't think this makes him a hero. Genocide will never be okay, and just because the intentions are good doesn't make it a good thing. I'd even venture to say that most bad people in Naruto don't think that they're bad. Even Obito and Madara thought that they were creating a paradise. You could argue Itachi had no choice, but there are a ton of videos out there showing that wasn't really the case. My favorite is NC Hammer 23s if you want to check that out. But that's all to say that, in my opinion, Itachi's story is not one of a secret hero. It's about a tragic villain. Itachi's reveal shook me and reminded me that there are people who I have an obligation towards. Itachi found meaning in being a big brother, and through him, so did I. It didn't cure me of everything I was going through, but his story helped teach me that meaning in my life wasn't going to come from a fraternity you get into, or even the career that you choose. Meaning in life comes from people. What I did and how I treated the people around me, especially my family. Itachi was part of a terrorist organization and was a mass murderer, but he still found meaning and purpose in his life. He made sure that Danzo wouldn't make a move on Sasuke, and he killed a piece of Orochimaru that was living in Sasuke's body. I don't know if you could say he died a hero, but he definitely died with purpose. And if Itachi could find meaning in his life, in the cursed life that he was forced to live, maybe so could I. And don't even get me started on the I will love you always scene. Dude, I was in pieces after that shit. Forget the Susano, forget the Tentails. That scene is the most powerful thing in Naruto for sure, hands down. I hope you guys like this video. It's a little different in style than anything I've done before, a little more personal, but if you guys liked it, please let me know in the comments and I'll do more. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit that bell too. It helps out the channel a lot. And shout out to Harsh Reviews for inspiring this video. And yeah, that's all for today. 
I hope you enjoyed. Until next time.